we are going to play some Dungeons and Doggos this evening. I have to check to make sure my microphone is not muted because sometimes that happens. It's not muted. I win. Okay. So I am joined here by three of the loveliest doggos in the entire world. Um, what we're going to do tonight is not Raiders of the Last Bork, which you might be familiar with from some earlier videos. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to explore an older adventure called Who Will Let the Dogs Out. It is also written by Animal Adventures. I highly recommend it. You can find the link down there in my Twitch stuff. Um, the thing is, is I haven't run this in over a year, and uh, uh, one of these lovely doggos looked at it with me months ago to see if we could turn it into a one-shot. I was really confident of that then. Uh, but we're also running a little late tonight, so I think what I'm telling you is I'm going to look at who will let the dogs out as I run this, but I'm probably going to make a bunch of stuff up. Um, these three lovely doggos have agreed to that, and my viewers don't get to agree, so you can go watch something else if this isn't interesting. Um, that being said, I would like to now um, introduce my lovely doggos. Let's start with uh, Badger. Badger, would you mind explaining us to us your wonderfulness. What do you look like? Hi, I'm Badger. I am small and I'm, I've got black fur mm -hmm. and I've got these eyebrows that tell you everything you need to know. Excellent. I, um, I'm an anxious little guy mm -hmm. and I tend to start yapping when I'm excited. Perfect. I tippy you do the foot um, thing? We were like, oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Love it. And sometimes I think backwards about it. Yep. Great. Um, and I'm excited to be here. That is marvelous. Um, now, I heard you mention your eyebrows. So are you the kind of doggo where um, some doggos, there, there are those doggos where they make perfect faces. Like you can see the sass. You can see the confusion. You can see the, really? You can see all that. Are you that kind of doggo? Oh yeah, absolutely. Super expressive. You can you can tell exactly how I'm feeling. Great. All right. That sounds good. Um, Scout, are you ready to describe yourself? I'm ready. Do it. I am not. I don't have a a large range of expression. I'm a cattle dog, and I'm either happy or sad, and I'm mostly happy and enthusiastic. I'm mm -hmm. more of a follower than a leader, and I particularly like doing what Badger mm -hmm. is doing. And standing next to Badger, mm -hmm. um, which is what happened on our, we, we've done an adventure together. And I thought that was a very successful um, way of doing things. Yeah, it did um, work out faithful. pretty well. <laughs> yeah, we were an amazing team. I'm a yeah. faithful ranger and you can count on me to basically do whatever you ask, whether or not it's sensible. All right. Is there a particular feature about Scout that stands out? Um, does Scout have particularly delicious ears? Is their tail the floofiest? What are we looking at here? Scout um, has a um, generally a tongue that hangs out of mm -hmm. um, the mouth yep. and does tend to pee a little bit when they get too excited. Got it. Now, does that tongue, uh, so it's hanging out, and when they focus on something like, you know, point, does the tongue like reel back in real quick and the mouth close? Is that kind of, or is it just uh, always hanging out? Open, yeah. It's just, got it. All right, cool. That's excellent. Um, now, boss, are you ready to describe your yourself? Certainly. I am large and in charge. Perfect. With mm -hmm. both my body and my brain. Perfect. Lots of fur, lots of drool. Great thinks about things too much okay yeah so a thinker good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now um is there anything about boss that stands out um uh from a physical standpoint do they have a particularly snuffy nose are there always you mentioned drool are is this are we talking like the ropes of drool that look like mm -hmm. a pearl necklace kind of thing or yeah pretty much mm -hmm. but the thing that you will notice the most is the eyes oh very expressive eyes then yeah yeah so you can just see the wisdom that's excellent. Now, how's Boss's bark? Is that pretty deep and... and pretty, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the floor shakes, yeah. Now, Badger, I imagine, you mentioned yapping. Is that a more high-pitched kind of bark? Oh, yeah. It'll cut right through you. 
Got it. And Scout, is Scout got that weird bell bark that cattle dogs have or something different? Uh, just kind of your mid-range. Um, I'm excited and I'll bark because everyone else is barking kind of bark. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. This was the group that set up the howl almost immediately in Raiders of the Last Bark. Yeah, okay. I'm remembering now. Yeah, I've, I've run too many of these games. <laughs> you guys were fun, though. Um, all right, I think I have a pretty good idea of what these doggos look like. If anybody in uh, chat has some questions, I'm sure we are happy to answer them. Otherwise, I think we're going to get right into it. Are you all ready for an adventure? So ready. Okay. You are each curled up next to um, your own fires. Um, Scout, you mentioned that you and Badger are kind of a pair. Do you imagine, you kind of were all a big group. Do you think you're all still traveling together? Yeah, and really, I don't go too far away from Badger, whether mm -hmm. Badger likes it or not, so. And is, is Boss hanging out with, with these puppos, kind of keep them safe, keep them in line? Yeah, he feels kind of responsible for them. Okay, so you're- Right. So you're all curled up next to a fire. You're all very deeply asleep. You're in a safe place, so nobody needed to set a watch. Um, you're between jobs. Uh, is it safe to say that this group travels around righting wrongs and doing good deeds? I think so. Are they, yeah. well, are they pretty well known for that, or are they a little more mercenary? they got to get paid before they're going to do anything. Oh no, I don't think money yeah, can think do we're... it too much. Yeah. yeah. You kind of happy-go-lucky, like, we have to, oh, there's a thing to fix. We're going to go fix it. Mm-hmm. I think so, yes. And I'm going to, I'm going to say, and disagree with you if you'd like, but I'm going to say that you guys have had been pretty successful in the past. You've had some fairly good luck. You've taken some scrapes, uh, but you've all come through it, and, um, you're feeling pretty good. You've you've got a pretty good handle on how to how to approach things. Does that sound about right? We're a great team. We're a great team. We're a great team, and we've done a great job. Perfect. Um. <laughs> all right. So you're curled up next to a, uh, a cozy fire. You're all feeling safe. And um, Scout, you begin to dream. You're dreaming of a village, and it's in flames. Badger, you are also dreaming. What comes to you first is this frenzied barking and snarling filling the air. It tears at the air uh, in a way that is very unsettling. Boss, you are also dreaming. But what you are dreaming is villagers. They're fleeing in panic. They're, they're being chased by something. Their faces are contorted in a way that is uh, just extremely upsetting. Scout, you realize you're also hearing um, the barking and snarling. You're also seeing the villagers panic. Boss, you also hear the snarling. You also see the village in flames. Uh, Badger, you see the village in flames and the villagers fleeing. You're all having the same dream. Suddenly, the scene fades. There's a stooped and aged half-orc. She's staring blindly towards you, as if she's not actually looking at each of you as if she's looking towards you. And she says, this will soon be the fate of Merrowald. She wheezes in this tired voice. It sounds, um, it sounds smoke, uh, uh, smoke damaged. It sounds, uh, just very weary. She's, she's spent a long time on this earth and this is not what she wanted to be dealing with in her retirement. She says, I am Rahimi. I protect them for now, but my time grows short. Please help us. And they hold out a trembling hand to you. And each of you has a choice. Are you going to reach out your paw and place it in this, this woman's hand? Badger? Yes. I'm going to place my, my whole face in her hand. Perfect. <laughs> Scout. It's a woman. Yes. I I look at Badger's enthusiasm and I'm like tentatively like sure and I kind of like slowly raise my paw and like slightly miss miss the hand. I'm like I'm I'm mostly there. You're like Ugh, I'm gonna do it. 
And then you finally... Should, yeah, I'll be brave. Sure. And if boss. Patrick can do it. Yeah. And boss. I'm going to just kind of hang back and see what happens. Are you going to put your hand, or your paw in this, this woman's hand? Yes, if they are doing it, I will. Okay, but it's a more <laughs> hesitant. You you need you need more information. Yes. As you place your paws in her hand, um, the world seems to spin around you, not in a disorienting way, and all of a sudden, your your paws land on a hard wooden floorboard, which is not where you were. You were all curled up around a fireplace, uh, um, a fire in, in in the woods somewhere. You realize you've been teleported into a large room at the center of what you just catch uh, is a, a magic circle, but it is fading uh, almost faster than you can see it. You've arrived together, and you become aware of this ringing noise on the edge of your hearing. Uh, it's not quite enough to bother you, um, but it, it's there. It's, it's kind of persistent. Actually, let me ask it this way. Would that kind of noise bother anybody? I'd be a lot to it. Mm -hmm. So your head's trying to find where, trying to figure out where it's coming from? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else sort of grumpy about it? Definitely make him think. Would make boss and, think, and I right? Have an, I, I know you know this, but I'm remembering that I have an, a, a keen sense of hearing. That's true. Yes. Um, and Badger, I'm sorry. I think I think you were trying to say something. Can you go ahead? I honestly probably wouldn't even notice it at all. There. Okay. Now, Scout, I believe what you were referring to is when um, doggos do perception checks. If it has to do with smell or hearing, they get advantage. Is that what we're... That is what I'm remembering. That's a good good memory. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to ask a Scout and Boss to roll either an Arcana or a Nature check. So what we're going to do is you're going to go to your character sheet. And um, you're going to roll a d20. That's the first one. Then in your character sheet, you're going to check Arcana and Nature and see if either of them has a plus to it. Do, take the one that's the highest. So Badger, you've got a plus two to... Na uh, sorry, not Badger. Badger's not rolling because Badger doesn't notice. Uh, yeah, so Scout, you're definitely going to want to use Nature because you have a plus one. Mm -hmm. You have a negative one to Arcana, so Nature for you. And Boss, you've got a negative one in both, so it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and roll a d20 and subtract a one for me. And then tell me what numbers we got. 16. Great. And boss? Seven. Okay. I'm like, I get it, Badger. You're busy thinking about important stuff. Sure. Yes. And boss, <laughs> you are con contemplating this noise and nothing's quite coming to you, but you're, you're going to think about it a little longer and maybe something will come to you. Scout, you've actually heard something like this before. It's similar to a noise that a druidic, uh, a druid would use. Sorry, it is similar to the noise that druid magic uses. And you think, you think you remember it having something to do with controlling, controlling minds. And you do a quick once over and like you shake your butt and you, you pick up your paws and you realize nobody's controlling you. The fact that you're hearing it is probably due to your fantastic hearing. Um, it's something to keep in mind. Yeah? It, and, and do I know that this is normally controlling human minds? So in, in, um, in the games that I run, humans and awakened animals are sort of on the same level. Humanoid. Humanoid, right. Um, oh. And okay. that, that goes for any of the races. So an awakened animal is the same same as like an orc or a goblin or a, an elf or whatever. Okay. It's humanoid, yeah. So so to answer your question, it is used to control humanoids, oh, not, up. yeah, and uh, like creatures and things. Got it. Um, I'm going to just hold on to that information because I'm not sure if it's important. And usually when I interrupt Badger and Boss, 
they they get annoyed with me because I'm just talking about kind of irrelevant things. Yeah, it is very exciting to you though. You're, I think mm-hmm. I, you're kind of yeah that that tongue. The is... whole world is exciting, so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna hold on to that. Um. Okay, and then you're you're realizing as you're as you're settling into where you are, the room that you're in. Where are you? Yep, command decision. The room that you're in is an is an inn, and um, it, it appears to be empty, which is unusual. There's a bar at the back, um, and there's somebody uh, uh, looking over at the bar with interest at what's just happened. There is um, a taller human male, uh, uh, in uh, also leaning against the bar, and he's looking towards you. Um, and there is a the the uh the half orc woman that spoke to you in your dream is slumped at the edge of where the circle was. Um, they're wearing the robes of a priest. You all recognize them as robes of a priest, and you will recognize her as Rahimi. The gentleman in the back is uh, dark skinned. He's got a slim build. He has one of those huge walrus mustaches. Just big old, like you, you can't even see his mouth. It's just a big old mustache that you know, fat at the bottom and comes out to these tips. And a um, uh, short beard and his right arm is heavily bandaged and it's in a sling. The woman behind the bar is has blonde hair and two tight buns on the side of her head. The the gentleman steps forward and the gentleman steps forward and says, is she going to be all right? And uh, the woman behind the bar actually hops down off of something and comes around and you realize that uh, the woman behind the bar is a halfling, so she's a little on the shorter side. And she bustles over and she's all business. She bustles over and and um, um, turns Rahimi under uh, under her back and checks her checks her pupils and her uh, you know and her breath and her pulse and she's like she'll be fine she just needs a rest and somehow manages to haul her up onto a bench nearby uh, and stuffs like a yeah no I lied she just lays her onto a bench nearby and it's just all just sort of like bustling around she's very. Um, yeah, no business. Uh, very businesslike. And the mayor says, or uh, sorry, the gentleman says, um, he, he turns to the three of you and he says, thank the gods that you've come. I I can barely believe it. Rahim, I promised that there would be someone to help, but in these times, I, I, I shouldn't have doubted her. The man in front of you is clearly very conflicted. There's something going on here that isn't quite right. This isn't usually the reaction you get when you, when, I mean, you've never been teleported in, into a magic circle into God knows what uh, before, but this isn't usually how these kind of interactions start. And he, and he, he seems to pull himself together a little bit and he says, please uh, ask anything you need to know. Um, my name is Mayor Raynor Everbright. And this, this is Clarissa. She owns the inn that we're standing in. Um, and Rahimi, you know, she's, she's who brought you here. What else can I tell you? Now, you're all fairly experienced at this. So I think each of you would address this in a different way. From what you've described, boss, you might take point. Does that sound right? Probably. What do you think boss would start with as far as I questions go? First of all, ask, is, is Rahimi going to be okay? What is going on? The Clarissa says she's just exhausted. Um, don't y'all worry about her. I'll keep an eye on her. Um, there's a, there's a, um, healer down the way and she's taking care of something else but she'll be right back over and uh, don't worry about her uh, I, I got her um, I'm gonna pour some whiskey down her throat just now and if, if she comes to she comes to and she doesn't she's fine don't worry about it 
And she heads back behind the bar, and she, you can hear her clinking glasses and stuff. But um, do you want to roll an insight check? Oh, yeah, to s- can you hear us okay? Can you hear me okay? It appears that Boss is having some technical difficulties. Let me... Whoop, lost camera. Let me check in with her real quick. All right, while we're waiting to get Vin back, um, uh, sorry guys, now I can. You can hear us now, boss? Yeah, that was so weird. It happens. Um, that's all right. So, uh, did you hear any of the Clarissa stuff? No. Okay, the short version is she assures you that she's okay. I was going to ask if you wanted to roll an insight check to see if you believed her. Oh, yes, I do. I feel like that a... that might be something Boss does. She, boss is kind of the one that makes sure everything's above board. Does that sound right? Yes, and you're not going to believe it, but mm-hmm. it's a 17. Great. Plus... Well. Insight six. Yeah, so you know everything about this woman. <laughs> you know that Clarissa, uh, you realize that Clarissa is very down to earth. There's a no-nonsense attitude about her, and you've you've met people like this before. She's not going to lie to you because she doesn't see what the bother is. Um, she doesn't put up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, whining. She She takes things at face value. She's probably a little hard on people. Um, and she's probably a little quick to, to judge, but if she's on your side, she's very loyal. And so when she says, uh, Rahimi's going to be okay, you can take that very much at face value and you can sense a little bit of worry there. So you know that she's gonna, she's going to make sure Rahimi's okay. And what do you think Boss would ask next? Or do you think Scout, would Scout or Badger kind of jump in? Badger, 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 what do you think, Badger? Perfect. (laughs) Um, Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to cautiously approach the mail Sniff his ankles. Mm-hmm. Some real thorough ankle sniff. Okay, and, and say, what are uh, sorry? What are Badger's eyebrows doing right now as they approach? Focused. Very focused. focused in, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. His, just I mean, so intently sniffing that I mean he's, he's basically like looking into his egg. Okay, um, I'm going to need you to roll an insight check as well. This one will be on the mayor. We'll be checking to see if um, if this... No, I don't like that face. That's not good. What happened? <laughs> it's, a, it's a five. Okay. <laughs> now, do you think that Badger would be a little too distracted by the smells uh, to not really notice uh, whether... To not really get a good read on the mayor, or do you think Badger would not get enough information from the smells to understand what the mayor's all about? I think he'd be too distracted. Got it. All right. So, so what if he approaches the mayor, and he he seems very like I'm gonna I'm gonna check this all, but then his tail starts to do that little wag thing where he's like, wait, no, what's what is this? What is it? Yeah, okay. So that's what happens. Um, all right. And Scout, is there anything you're doing to, to get some, some more information? Well, I'm not stupid. I just, I just follow Boss and Badger and what that's, what, the, you know, the, the, what they're dropping. And so it's like, they obviously want to know more information. So I do my little like jump on all four paws, you know, like little bound from spot to spot in the place. Cause this is, exciting and i've never been teleported before but i want to know 
why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we here? Badger, why are we here? Boss, why are we here? And so I'm just going to be asking that question for a little while. Okay. Um, so you're asking that question and you realize that the mayor is not reacting to you like humans normally react. So normally when, um, when you're bouncing around and you're asking these kinds of questions, sometimes uh, more official type humans make this face where they're like, I, I need you to just stop doing like all of this, like and sort of gestures at all of you. And I'm used to that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't love that. This guy doesn't do that. He seems to be looking at you with a peculiar kind of sadness. Can you roll me? How about you roll me an insight as well? Everybody roll insight. 18. Okay. Plus. Looks like you have a plus three to that. Yeah, I got a 15 with a 15. Oh, so that's all together. Okay, 18 total. Great. Yeah, cut out for a second. That's okay. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so you uh, you realize that the, the way he's looking at you... Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the way he's looking at you um, remind. It's very clearly that he has lost something. It's that sort of sad smile as he watches you... And he's not annoyed at all. He's almost, if, if there wasn't that loss, he'd be, he'd be sort of contentedly amused. He would really enjoy this. And so it's, what really reaches out to you for, about his expression is that sadness. And, and that's my third facial expression. And so as I like see that he's sad, my eyebrows also move into Do a this like, sad thing. So, yeah and I feel I'm like feeling it and and so I sit down I'm not jumping anymore and I like look at him and I'm happy to just stay here with him and and frankly if anyone's gonna get me to move it's gonna have to be one of the other dogs um as you sit and focus on him you realize that um a tear forms in his eye and he dashes it away and he says I'm so sorry. Um, I will answer all of your questions. And he's trying to pull himself together. And he says, which, um, may I please be, may I please know, will you, would you, and he's, he's struggling to like, do the whole like, please cordially invited to tell us who you are. Instead, he's like, you know, he's sort of bumbling, but he's basically asking like, what to call you like what are what are your names um the kind of thing how do how do you all introduce yourselves to these two and a half people the and i the half is the unconscious yeah. person not the halfling <laughs> would boss maybe take point on that and and introduce everybody or would scout get really excited and introduce everybody or would badger sort of sit and look up and be like oh, i'm badger like what what's this look like Mm. I think I would look at boss and then I would like go and lick his hand while I wait for boss to tell me what to do. Oh, well, I would say, well, I'm boss and these are my friends. What, what's wrong, sir? Um, he said, okay. He says, uh, he he sit he leans against a stool um as your uh scout as you're you're looking at his hand and he he starts absent mindedly like petting your ears and I rub him to his thigh the side of my head he's anytime he looks at you he's trying really hard not to cry, so he's kind of like focusing on boss bosses boss's business boss is asking the questions like he's gonna he's gonna answer boss but he's still he's still patting your ears and he says four nights ago all of the dogs in the town started acting really strangely and they every single one of them left their homes and they went outside now this is a working town our dogs work alongside us we don't have any um awakened in our town but you believe me when I say they are family. 
And so we don't keep them inside. If they want to go outside, they go outside. But the strange thing was they all went outside at the same time. And they were all looking like they were listening to something. Like they had some, like they could hear something that none of us could hear. And then all of a sudden, they turned on us. These are our friends and our family and they all of a sudden, they, they, and he can't finish. And he just, he, he sets his hand right on your head and he stops and Clarissa stops around the on the bar and she says, listen, it wasn't pretty. Uh, we survived. We drove them off. They turned tail at one point and they ran into the woods. And, well, I don't need to tell you we're pretty upset about it. And I think what he's trying to say is, and I'll speak for you, sir. And he sort of nods and he's like, we want you to get them back. That's all we want. We want our friends back. That's, that's all we want. And then she gets a little, yeah. And then she stomps behind the bar and you hear her like aggressively clinking glasses like she's busy back there. And he says, um, the dogs are an integral part of the village. And it sounds like he's giving like a speech, you know, like, um, like a thing he spits out when people visit. They're, they're used for herding, they're used for farming and hunting. They are deeply loved and valued members of the families that own them. And in fact, every family in this town has at least one dog, if not more, uh, because they are so integral to our way of life. Um, Rahimi is a wizard uh, that is studying the relationship between magic and nature, he says. She was, uh, she was staying here with Clarissa uh, in the inn, and as soon as the dogs started, as soon as the dogs changed, she helped us drive them away, and they, uh, they went, they went off into the forest. We haven't seen them since. We've, we've sent search parties out, but they've either gotten turned around, or they got attacked by wolves, which we've never had a problem with before in these, these woods. Never. And, um, they weren't able to find any of the dogs and we're just, we're at a loss. And Rahimi said that she would put out a call and call for people that could help. And you're, you're what she called. But I have to say, as soon as the dogs ran off into the forest, the strangest thing happened. I need to show you. Can, can you follow me outside? Is that all right? Um, before before Boss and Badger can answer, I look at them both and I say, guys, I know you told me only to talk when it was important, but I need you to know that there is a sound um, that I heard when we first arrived and I could tell that maybe, maybe the sound was for mind control. Both the mayor and Clarissa back away from you. And they're like, you can hear the sound? And they are, they they look terrified in a way that the mayor looks ashamed of. Like he flinches back and then he gets control of himself. And Clarissa just climbs up on top of the bar and like is like they're both like you can hear that sound. And I, I I'm just telling you because maybe I'm wondering if we should put something in our ears before we go into the forest or if we could do something just to be really careful. And I think Boss and Badger will tell us what to do, but but what why are you guys so scared of me? You were my friends a minute ago. The mayor laughs very nervously and he starts to, to pet your head again. He's, I'm so sorry. We, y you can't know what it's like to have somebody that you've raised from a baby and has been by your side and suddenly turns on you. It is such a terrifying experience and I apologize for reacting that way to you. That was, that was, I'm, I'm just extremely sorry. Clarissa plops down on the bar and her, lets her, her legs hang over and she's like, Heck, my babies went after me. Of course I got nervous when I heard you could hear that noise. What if you started going all berserk? I I don't want to have... Yeah, sorry about that. I Dinner's on me. She, that's, that's her apology. And I, and I believe them? Yeah. Yeah, you're... Um, I could make you roll insight a billion times, but... Um, I don't want to. Um, your insight's going to last for a while. They, uh, their behavior hasn't changed. They both seem very honest and upfront. Um, 
uh, this gentleman does seem very upset and this lady is, is, is only ever going to tell you what's what. She's never going to, it doesn't seem like she's lying at all. I'm, so I'm I just wondering, yeah. Scout, why, why are you just telling us this now? Why didn't you tell us when it happened? Boss, you told me to only talk when it was important, and I just didn't know if it was important yet. I'm sorry, did how, I do the right thing? How is mind control not important? I hear a lot of things. Boss, I'm trying. I'm trying to do all the things you told me. Mm-hmm. Would Boss Baby think of a way that they could explain to Scout why mind control takes more precedence <laughs> over that weird wrestling noise that was a chipmunk the other day is there maybe something boss could say that would sort of narrow scouts focus hone that skill i'm I'm really just thinking why would you think it has to do with mind control and not okay a chipmunk how about you you ask that in whatever way boss would ask that Scout. Yes. Why would you ever think that this is a mind control situation? I could. I mean, when I heard the sound and we first arrived, then I wondered what it was, and I listened with my really good ears, and I could tell that maybe this was a sound that could be used to control minds. But I checked, and I'm fine. And when I looked around, mm-hmm. boss, you're always fine, and badges well, okay. Well, wait a minute. The thing is, though, that you didn't start talking about mind control sounds until after they told us what happened to their dogs. So I'm just wondering if they put this idea in your head and now we're going to just follow something that's really nothing. Oh, Badger, God. can you I add in here? Badger, I mean, us, I feel like you're being critical of our dear friends. <laughs> I think... I think Scout is just fine. I think, um, you know, he, he, he has some things. I think, I mean, these people smell like food. They offered us food. They are less scary than I assumed. I'm pretty sure it's like, it's fine. It's fine. Well, and Badger. I just be careful when we went into the woods. Badger, you and Scout work pretty well in concert, and you would have noticed uh, Scout scout's ears doing that flippy thing when when she when she hears stuff or or they hear stuff um so you could probably confirm to boss that well scout did notice something outside so yes i noticed something outside i saw the flippy ear i just assumed it was a leaf so i just which is reasonable yeah a little bit i'm so unsure but Okay. Boss, give me a break. Come on. <laughs> All right. Um, um, and Should we the- protect ourselves? All right. How would yeah. you do that? I can put... Do you have any cork, um, Clarissa, that we could put in our ear? And she says, yeah, I've got uh, like wine bottles and stuff. You want the corks out of those? I've got a whole basket of them. It's my best idea. Boss, what do you think? I mean, obviously we should use cotton or toilet paper. As you're discussing this, um, a a woman sweeps in. She's a half-elf, and she looks very haughty. She's, she's sort of nose in the air. As soon as she sees you, she relaxes her um sorry, work thing. Um she relaxes her sort of aristocratic fancy stance and she says, "Oh, Rahimi was able to get help. Thank the gods. What taking too long? Where is Rah- Oh my god, is she okay?" And she rushes over to Rahimi and she checks her pulse and stuff and Clarissa's like, "She's fine." And this half-elf is like, well, I'm going to check her. And Clarissa's like, fine. And the half-elf's like, fine. And Clarissa's like, fine. And she's like, and the mayor just rolls his eyes. 
like w- <sighs> this is happening and then uh the mayor introduces her as uh Sylvis um um uh uh oh god what's like the honorific for dogs because he wouldn't be able to tell gender like, you mean like lassie no oh, like I, I see i don't like like sir like sirs or madams like there's no gender involved mm. in doggos cuz you'd have to like look and that's not a thing and and mm. so like would he just call you doggos that is that like the honorific like noble 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 pups noble pup pups no um <laughs> I guess he could call you noble adventurers. How's that? Noble adventurers sound all right? All right. So he says, uh, noble adventurers. I'm very sorry. This is Sylveth. Um, she is our, our healer. This town is a bit of a hub um, uh, for visitors and the like and, and trade and such. And so we, we warrant our own healer. Um, she came to us and, uh, she, she's just such a help. Um, and Sylvia stands up and brushes off her, her robes and just very like, all right, Rahimi's fine. I'm, yes. Um, you are all here to help us recover our dogs? I think so, yeah. And she turns to the mayor and she says, did you tell them about the noise? And he says... Yes, I told them about the noise. And it's very clear he's like holding on to all of his patients with two hands, even the one that hurts. And he's like, mm. yes, I told them about the noise. And she's like, did you tell them that it won't affect them? And he was like, and he like rolls his eyes way back to the back of his head. And you can tell like he's just trying real hard not to just reach out and strangle her. And he says, no, you didn't tell me that part. And Sylvit said, it goes, well, oh, Rahimi told me that. Ugh, I'm sorry. I, I, for, I forgot. To, okay, well, here's the thing. Rahimi told me that the noise that took our doggos, that, that magic, that, that's controlling them. Uh, that is only for, for, our poor doggos. These dogs are awakened. They have the same type of intelligence that we have. Not that our doggos aren't just the smartest puppos in the whole world. My little baby, I just... No! 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 I'm not going to cry right now. You can't make me. It's... I'm fine. Okay, so Rahini told me that just our poor doggos are affected and these these noble adventurers will not be affected. Now, she did say something about they might be able to use the noise, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really listening to that part. And the mayor says, okay, so noble adventurers, it, it seems like you won't need to, need to protect yourselves from this noise. And he seems very put upon, and he was doing just fine before Sylvith came in here, and... Mm. So let me get this straight. How do you know that it's not going to affect us? Also, how many dogs are we actually trying to rescue? Give us an idea here. Yeah. The um, so Sylvis turns to you and she says, um, "Rahimi is a wizard, and she is studying the nature of." I just said it a minute ago. What is she studying? Ah, the relationship between magic and nature in the forest. And she is very wise in the way of druids. She's not a druid herself, but she's made a great deal of study of them. And what she has determined is that this is druidic magic. She has a little bit more information. Um, uh, she's determined that it is druidic magic and that they don't really have spells crafted to affect uh, humanoids. They're more to control uh, creatures. And like when when um, Silvis came in, I was like kind of sunk low and a bit dejected behind Boss and Badger. And like as this whole conversation unfolds, I like 
come out a, a little bit of the corner and I'm looking at boss like, you know, maybe, maybe it was a good contribution. What do you, what do you think? Uh, mm. You know, this, is, this sounds right to me. It's what I, it's what I picked up boss, boss. Nothing. Mm. Maybe. You're a hot boss. Clarissa <laughs> snaps her fingers and she says, Oh, that reminds me. Rahimi was asking me about this guy that was prowling around here the other day. And everybody turns to her. And she says, This is stupid. I'm going to get y'all some, some water. And you ready for dinner? You want some dinner? It's about dinner time. I'm getting you dinner. And with that, she stomps off into what you imagine is the kitchen after saying, This reminds me of some information Rahimi was bugging me about the other day. Um, fortunately, she bustles back in fairly quickly. Silveth has only started tapping her toe in, in frustration. And she lays out some bowls with, uh, uh, water and, um, what looks like a pretty hearty stew. There's more, there's more meat chunks than, than, than liquid there. And, um, as soon as she, as she walks back in, she says, um, there's a stranger passing through a day, a day or so, and you know we get all kinds, of course, because we're a bit of a uh, like the like the mayor said, we're a bit of a hub and all. And I do a pretty brisk business, but this fella, I just didn't like the feel of him. And you know what, Honey and Mays didn't like him either, and they like everyone. And Sylvith and the mayor are nodding, like, yeah, those those dogs don't have a lick of sense. They love everyone. And she's like, but they they got their hackles up at this this gentleman, and I have never seen either of them do that, especially Honey. Honey's even had a litter of puppies, and you could pick up any of those puppies the minute they popped out of her, and she still wouldn't say woof at you. She and she got all upset. So I that gave me pause. I had to think about that one because that was just so dang strange. Um. She said, now that, that filthy beggar was, 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 he spat at me when I found him prowling around the stables. Why would you prowl around the stables is what I was thinking. And he was out there and he, I, I tried to, to kick him out. He wasn't staying in the inn. He was just sort of just wandering around the houses and peering in them, you know, and that's not good behavior. And so I called him out and told him to go away. And he told me, he said, I get what's coming to me, uh, it, and he pointed straight at me like he'd do me harm. So I called the girls on him, and they 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 chased him right off. Now my girls don't do any, you know, they don't bite or anything. But when I when I got call them, they come and that that gentleman ran right off. You know what? He dropped this, and she goes behind the bar and she brings out. It's a little object. It looks like it's been woven from thin strips of of willow. And it has a latticework circlet in it with a blood red disc at its center. And she holds it out. What do y'all do? Who sniff it. Sniff it. Uh, Badger, you sniffing it as well? Boss, are you getting in there or are you observing? Yep. You're observing? Okay. Um, okay, so I want some perception checks from everyone. With advantage? Uh, yeah, because you're using smell. Okay, so that means I roll two d20s and I use the best. That is true, yeah. So advantage means either you roll two d20s um, if you have too many dice like I do, or you roll the same 20 twice, and whichever whichever number is higher, you take that one. Disadvantage is the opposite. You roll two d20s and you take the lower number. But y'all have advantage. And the modifier is perception? It is. So, Scout, you've got a plus five. So I got a 16 plus 5, 21. Badger, you have a plus zero. That's odd. <laughs> In a taco. <laughs> it sounds about right, though, but I did roll an 18. Oh, that's pretty good then. And then, uh, boss, what did you got? You got a plus four. 18 with my plus four. Okay. All of you know, um,. All of you know that there is a scent um, there's a difference between man-made things and things that come from nature and 
Um, if you've got like, if you cut down a tree and you turn it into a piece of furniture and it's in someone's house, there's a bit of nature there, but it's, it's got a lot of the scent of, I don't know if you'd call it civilization or just not nature. And everything has that. You're all wearing armor and weapons that, that carry that man-made stuff. You've got all, um, you travel in towns and you do, you do all of that kind of thing. And, um, so it's very rare, even when you travel through, even that campfire you were at before you had this dream, even that, that was a, you were by a road and there, so everything you've encountered, very rarely have you encountered anything that's pure nature. But this is it. This thing right now has the barest glimpses of of something that feels man-made. This feels, for all that it is clearly made, it 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 is um, resonating so clearly as something. Yeah, that'll work. Resonating so clearly as something that comes from just from nature. Now, on that, we are going to take a quick break uh, because I have to use the ladies' room. And um, we're going to be back in 10 minutes. Now, stream, stream, I'm going to throw up the uh, Be Right Back screen and I'm going to mute all the microphones. Um, so you're not going to hear anything um, and you're just going to see the Be Right Back screen. Um, it is 7.15-ish now where I am at. And so at 7.25, we'll be back. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in chat. I'll come back and answer them in chat. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Uh, is that does that work for my players? You all good? To find my be right back screen before I can put it up. Okay, it's happening. Uh, we will be right back. Boop.
one more time. Hello, stream stream. <laughs> We're live with Dungeons and Doggos, not Treasure Tuesday. And I've unmuted myself. Ugh. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, that break was a little longer than normal. We had to figure out some technical stuff. Um, but we did, and we're back, and we're very excited. Now, the last thing that y'all heard was that there was this, this, uh, willow and this, this, no, uh, what, no, so why am I trying? Let me, let me read it. <laughs> This object woven from thin strips of willow, and it's, it looks like a latticework circle, circlet kind of thing. And it's got a blood red disc at its center. And you all rolled perception checks, and you know that it is, um, it is definitely very nature focused. Now, uh, is there any, any reactions from y'all before I ask you to do the next thing? I absolutely like leap back and I look at Badger and Boss and I'm like, it smells like forest. Okay. You're, you're absolutely right, buddy. You did it. Yep. Good job. Badger yeah. agrees. Yeah, it does. Yep. But, but what does that mean, Badger? What does that mean? You know, it could mean anything. Well, you both, you realize that it supports the druidic thing from earlier, right? Like, this kind of supports your whole druidic magic thing from earlier. Yeah, yeah. So you might think, well, maybe. Okay, so you guys are going to think about it for a minute. Can I get an... Can I get an arcana, a religion, or a history check from any of you? Tell me what you're doing, and I'll tell you what you get to know after you roll. If I'm t not great at any of them. Basically, what I would recommend is if you're if you're better at any of them, do do that one. So Badger, yeah. you're good at Zero. None, of them. none of those. <laughs> I got cool. a six. Great. That's that's a that's that is a okay. Uh, boss, what do this you? What, what do you got? You've at least got pluses. Val, what'd you roll? I have a nine. You have a nine? Badger, yep. what did you roll? <laughs> so roll a d20 for me. Can you roll a 20, please? I rolled a 12. You rolled a 12? Mm -hmm. I rolled a 12. Good enough. Um, this is a druidic focus. You do recognize it as a druidic focus. And it reminds you of... In your past, um, before you found this excellent group of doggos to work with, um, you were alone. And you were learning the skills that you now take great pride in. And during that time... As you were learning those skills, you came across, just very briefly, a cult of the darkest kind. And you were very fortunate to only have brief contact with them. But you do remember that this particular red disc is very, very much like the druidic focuses that they used. It was a horrible group known as the Blood Weavers. And they were known for using dark powers. And they consorted with the deepest and darkest of elemental forces. They have, you also know, the way that you came into contact with them is, um, uh, is you know, uh, what the blah, words are hard. And everyone should feel bad for my face, mouth, noises. Um, you know, uh, um, the the way that the blood the blood weavers come into conflict with civilization is because the blood weavers have the most passionate hatred for the trappings of civilization and they are mostly found deep in the wilds weaving their horrible dark magics and it is mostly bent towards the destruction of civilization and this disc that particular weaving and that disc that this this particular token looks just like one of those I'm gonna say all of what you said. I'm gonna. I say but it. 
But the oh badger. Oh my gosh, one. you guys. Yeah. Yes, we this out. Would would badger spit it out like, okay, so a long time ago there was blood weavers and they're really bad and they're super bad and they don't like civilization and oh my god and this is exactly like that. Would would badger get really excited like that? Yes, he would, and he'd he'd also be very physical. He'd be like something around. There should be like, oh yeah, like that. Okay. With that voice, exactly. He kind of is a grumbler. <laughs> The blood weavers and they're going to the stupid focus of the Yeah, good. Okay. Um, yeah, what do the rest of you do? Boss Scout? I feel like what's interesting about Scout is that when I have a job, I am on it. And it's like I'm focused. And so as Badger says this, like and I sense that maybe Badger needs me I stand to more attention where you might expect me to actually put my tail between my legs but I and I'm like there and I'm like right next to Badger and I'm like I I'm I, we've got this together like we can do anything together and I'm like listening and I'm alert and I'm so interested and I'm like druids man I knew it you and did you I'm did ready. know it yeah yeah, you did know it. This was this was the exact thing that you knew. You were very excited about it. Okay, uh, boss, how are how are we reacting? I am thinking, man, Scout, you really did it. You knew it, and I'm gonna take Badger's lead on this. All right, and I look at you like, will you ever say it out loud? <laughs> Good job. Good thing we have telepathy. <laughs> I just wish that one day Boss would tell me I did a good job. Just and one day. Assuming that I know. Anything, yeah. Maybe. I'll take anything. <laughs> I, I feel like there are so many people that will watch this and be like, I feel that way about my boss. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll just oh, all the roles, the roles have. Every... We'll just giggle the whole time, and it'll be great. <laughs> just kidding, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Virginia's fault. No, I'm kidding. Um. Uh. All right. So when, um, when Badger, when you're you're getting all this out, uh, Clarissa's like like drops it. She's like, ah, oh, no, oh god, and the mayor's like. Oh, that's what took our dogs? And, like, this guy looks like he's ready to just snap and panic. And Sylveth, uh, Sylveth is trembling. She's, she's terrified. Everybody in this room has become absolutely wildly terrified. Um. What else can I tell you? Um, Sylveth, uh, you notice that Sylveth, while trembling with terror, is, like, taking deep breaths, and she's, she's sort of clenching and unclenching her hands, like, I'm, and it almost seems like she's, like, talking to herself, um, she's calming herself down, and she, you know, she does this thing where she, like, puts her hands down, like, she's smoothing out a fix, like, a, a dress kind of thing, and she's like, all right, I have been working with Rahimi to study elements of the forest. I might be able to tell you some things. There's a pool in the center of the forest. It's locally known as the Green Heart. It has magical properties. I do not fully understand them. Rahimi was making the study of this. She's been experimenting from uh, with the, the water from the pool, and she's created a potion that causes sleep when thrown over an individual. I have three of these vials um, that Rahimi has trusted to me, and I can give each one of you one of these vials if you would like. It's possible. Like, yeah. Right. Okay. So you each get um, a, a sleep, uh, an item called Feywild Water. It can be thrown onto a target or ingested. The target must pass a DC 15 wisdom check or the target falls asleep for 1d6 minutes, or until damage is taken. 
I will remind you of all of this. If you would just like to be like, I threw the, the water stuff at the thing, I will, I, I'll take care of it. Uh, but you can also write it down. And I think it's an item you can add. Um, she says, it's possible if that group is drawn to deep magic, it's possible that pool is their goal. And it's close enough to the village that we would antagonize them. That's probably why they came here. And they would see the what they did with our dogs as a way of releasing them back to nature where they belong. And the mayor says, they belong with that? I, and Clarissa, you know, to pats his knee because it's about what she can reach. And she says, it's possible the village does pose a, a threat to to the pool as well as the, the druids. Um, that's all I know. I'm so sorry. Wait, wait. Um, uh, first of all, it's really rude to think that you can set dogs free when dogs have choices of their own and if they want to stay with people, they stay with people. But also, secondly, um, somebody said that maybe we could use the sound or the thing and the thing to trace them. So can we use the sound? Can we use the sound to follow? Can we follow the sound so that we can find what's going on? Can we find the source of the problem? She looks thoughtful and she says, you know, that's not something I can hear, but it's possible you could use that to, to find the source of all this. That, that's a really good idea, she says. And I'm like, I'm, I'm really pleased with her response because what I really want is Boss and Badger to say that it's a good idea. Good idea, Scout. <laughs> Does Scout, like, freak out? Like, no, no, no. I'm, like, totally, mostly still. My tail calm. goes a bit crazy, but I do. I, there's a tiny little whiff of pee. <laughs> Clarissa hey, kind of, Clarissa, well done. Clarissa kind of makes eye contact with you when you realize what you've done, and she's like, "Don't worry, don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it." <laughs> okay. Um, just trying to find something that could stand in for. I have a map. I'm gonna put you guys on a map. It's gonna be very exciting because it's a map. We're gonna stop looking at this checkered floor. Um, all right. Um, sorry, did you ask a question and I completely missed it? I've been having trouble with questions well, today. I, I mean, I really, I asked Boss and Badger if they thought we could trace the, the, the sound. I see. And, and Badger Boss. said it was a good idea, which was a bit too much for me to handle. Well, was that Badger or was that Boss? I thought I heard Boss say Boss, that. Boss hasn't said anything yet, and I am very aware of that. That is not untrue. If you had such good hearing, you would have heard me say, well done, Scout. But I will not repeat that. <laughs> let's, let's say that Scout does definitely hear Boss saying that they did a good job. I think. Yeah, let's say that Boss doesn't have a terrible internet connection and that Scout did actually hear that. Let's say that, yeah. Say that. <laughs> That's what we're saying. All right. Um, all of a sudden you hear... I think I've said all of a sudden so many times this, time, this game. I'm sorry. Uh, your keen ears... Uh, well, Scout's keen ears. Picks up uh, sounds of shouting and panic coming from outside and the mayor immediately turns to the door and starts to move towards it um when he he throws open the door and he says what is going on out here do you follow him i mean i would check with badger yeah no i'm after him yeah i'm usually like a step behind you yeah. so there's a there's a right. there's a dozen or so villagers out outside and they're wringing their hands you've never actually seen anybody actually like wring their hands but they're doing it they're all standing there like i don't know what to do and they're panicking you their faces are just rictuses of panic it's and um several of them are shouting a name over and over again in different directions as if they're looking for someone 
And at the center of the crowd, there's a halfling couple standing. And um, you can tell they're, uh, they're a couple because the one woman has her arm around the other woman's shoulders. And she's comforting her. And they're both halflings. And the one who's crying is holding... Um, she's holding a small stuffed toy bear just as gently as you can hold a toy. And the mayor is down, down with them. And uh, he straightens up and he says, this, this is Laura and Kayla. They're, they own the bakery. Their son has disappeared. His name is Timony. The, the halfling who was comforting the crying woman, uh, her apron is just stained with flour and she very gently takes the, the toy bear from, from her partner and holds it out to you. There's an unmistakable aroma of chocolate and mint and halfling, a uh, halfling child. It assails your senses. And the woman who was crying, she goes, I thought he'd fell I thought he'd fallen down the well. Like last feast day celebrations. He's always getting, he's getting into everything. He's always climbing and, and, but I think he's gone looking for Jasper. And she, she can't speak anymore. And the, the one who's standing a little straighter says, Jasper's our dog. I'm sure the mayor's told you that they've all run off. Jasper is an old, old man. And he took to Timony like, like nothing. They're, they're tied at the hip. They're, and we think Timony has gone looking for him. We, we didn't see Jasper in, in the, the fuss that happened. Um, so we don't know if he's been affected, but he's certainly not here. And he would be. Um, he must have run off three nights ago like, like the others did and, we just, we can't find our boy. And can you please just help us find our boy? What do y'all do? I'm gonna... You're gonna be like, no! Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna gently take the bear. Okay. I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna give it to Scout. Okay. I'm gonna say, Scout, you gotta find this kid. Okay. I'm gonna turn to the parents and I'm gonna say, you got this. They both just start crying, and the mayor wraps the, his good arm around them, and he's murmuring to them. Um, Scout, you take the bear. Um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Um, you have advantage because it's uh, uh, smell smells. And I am I was made for this moment, especially because Badger has given me the task, but also because I feel the I feel the loss of this child. Yeah, frankly, if you didn't already have advantage, I'd be giving it to you because of the way that you and Badger handled that. That worked really well, um, oh I think. Oh, my gosh. And so do I have any modifier? You do. You've got... Mm, -dum -dum. You are a scout, and you have a plus five. Perception? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then I'm on a 24. Great. Um, you very, very easily pick up the scent of Timony. Now, I believe in our last game, I referred to scent trails as almost um, sort of a synesthesia thing. Synes, mm -hmm. whatever. Where it's almost like a trail of colored lights. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Then that happens. So you see a trail of... of um, my tail points, my nose gets sharp, I'm ready, and I'm following these lights. All right. And do you all just head straight off? And Badger's reassured the parents. Boss, you doing anything before you just book it right out of there? I am following right behind Scout. Got it. Okay, so Scout's taking the lead. Badger's probably right up on Scout's hip. And Boss is following behind. Does that sound right? Okay. Boss is, um, like, holding up the radio. Thing. That's what Buzz does. Yeah, there. she's, 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 tra she's keeping track of the, yeah. She, yeah. Frankly, she's, got it. she's probably making sure the two of you don't run off after something and and For keeping sure. keeping track to make sure nobody's like sneaking up behind you is probably what's happening, sure. I imagine. And I'm, I'm getting some knowing looks from from uh, boss. So I think <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so the the path leads out out of the village and the inn was um, sort of towards the front of the village where it might be closer to the main road. And this. Um, this trail is leading you back towards the back of the village where it butts up against this forest. 
Um, and you see some odd sights of these like vines and um, uh, almost it like like trees that have been hacked into pieces and vines have been hacked into pieces and you're not quite sure what that's about but you keep going and um you make your way into the forest and as you leave the village and you get into this forest that ringing sound is stronger in the back of your head it seems to be getting louder i let everyone know i can hear it immediately yep yeah everybody hears it yeah i'm not holding back on the information anymore Mm mm-hmm Yep. Um, you, the village is soon obscured by the view of the trees because this is a very dense forest. Oh, they're very dense trees. The sound is muted under the green canopy. The light fades down to the twilight because the trees are so tightly packed. All you can hear are yourselves. The forest is silent, which is not normal. Um, normally, forests have all these little sounds, creatures and, and the wind. There's a dead calm. There's no wind. There's no breeze. There's no air movement of any kind except that that you make yourselves. There's strange. The only noises are these strange echoes that are coming through the forest. And you're traveling through the uneven ground. You're trying to avoid these twisted roots that seem to have boiled up under uh, what looks like a normal path. And the, they seem to be have freshly boiled up. There's sudden dips in the earth, and you can see the break in the dirt. These dips are not, not normal. Um, you've traveled for about an hour, and the woods are slowly darkening, and you reach a a a, a, a juncture in the path. Junction in the path. There's two paths you could take. Um, I need another perception check to see if uh, you see what you see. With advantage. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Fifteen. Fifteen total? Mm-hmm. You're picking up a second scent now. It's that of an old dog. Um, it's it's a couple days old. Th- and the child scent that you got from the teddy bear, or the, did I say it was a teddy bear? Mm-hmm. Whatever it was, the I toy. So. Um that one's fresher. The the dog, the old dog's is an older scent trail, but the child's is a fresher scent. And they've they've intertwined. I'm so sorry. Honestly, um, I'm worried about this kid. If these dogs have been kind of corrupted by the druid magic, like I, you know, I know I want to bring these dr- dogs back to their true nature, but in the meantime, is this kid going to be okay? And so I am as sharp as ever right now. Okay. Do you communicate to your fellows, uh, fellow folk, uh, doggos? Yeah. Do you communicate like, to your doggos? I do like a, a kind of a sign, a sign thing with my paw and I'm like, guys, there's something else going on here. They know exactly what I'm talking about because we have been working together for a while and I, and they also know this is the moment where I'm like most wanting their praise and recognition. Okay. Does Badger and Boss do anything? To acknowledge oh, this, I guess that means we say, "Go get them, buddy." There we go. All I want them to do is like be on my team. I, yeah, right behind you, right behind you. Yeah, I am. That is everything to me. How about you, Badger? Are you doing good? Yes, I'm. I'm right behind you. I have to take a picture of my kitten because it looks like his neck is like his head shouldn't do this. I'll send it to the chat later so you can see what I mean. But like. Hashtag how is that comfortable? You've got to be kidding me. Also, it's really hard to take pictures of the kitten because his tail is so long and so his tail's always cut off. It's the worst. How 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 could you? Um Alright, so you're able to pick the right path. It's the left one. Um Now you're starting to head up a hill. Um it's a gentle incline, but it uh, there's a crest at the top, and you're not going to be able to see over it. So I need a another uh, perception check. Uh, it can be from anyone. Um, or, uh, Scout, you can keep doing it. Whatever works. Badger, what do you think we should do? I defer to you. You can got to check? You want me to check? I'll yes. do that. I want you to check. 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 Use your nose. 17. 17. Oh. Great. You started picking up the 
unmistakable aroma of wolf um, a couple, like, uh, maybe a maybe hundred feet back. But now... I this, like, super cool punk rock hairstyle as my heckles go up. It, and it, I look at these two and I'm like, wolf, you guys, wolf. We've met this before. We can do it again. But as you hit the top of the rise, before you, you crest it, you also pick up the bitter tang of fear. And it's no, not, it's so not, fun. it's not just the fear of, of a, of a humanoid. It is the, it's got that edge that you, you never want to smell of a child's fear. And uh, you also pick up the heavy musk of animals in hunting mode. And it is washing over this rise. You know that there is an attack in process. What do you do? I fully, like, diverge off the path and defecate. And then I, like, the guys are like, what are you doing? Right? I'm imagining that's what you would feel. And I'm like, I think Timony's in trouble. And... There's wolves, and the other dogs have gone a bit feral, and and I think I guys, I brought you here. That's my job. I'm the ranger. Uh, what do we do next? Where are they? What, and I, what I can do you tell you where they are. But what? you're telling us where they are. Yeah, I I feel like I know where they are, but what what do we do about it? What where? We go. This, oh, I, I'm just gonna. Like, I have more poop that I can make if, if that's what you think is a good idea. Hey, I'm going. Yeah, Badger, that's you. That's your job. I'll just... I'll, I'm right here behind you, buddy. All right, so y'all gonna run in there? Yeah. I'll be second or third. I <laughs> forgot to pull up stat sheet, so I'm gonna do that right now. do do do, do. One. So I'm like busy on the side and you guys are like, I'm like I'll like, i I'll follow you. It's over there. All right. Um, so you crest this rise. And this is the scene you see before you. Now, I'm going to need you to use a little bit of imagination because I don't have tokens for humans yet. And so that plant on top of that rock is Timony, okay? <gasps> and these two huskies are wolves. And this goofy beagle on the back is uh an old just old hound and they're all going for timony i shall describe the scene no. is it timony's dog uh, you don't really have a way of telling that um but okay. this this is a very old dog so it you yeah um and this is a halfling little boy so yeah you could probably assume that um there's a bowl of trees, uh, B-O-L-E. Uh, they're forming, the, they form a perimeter of a small clearing. It's maybe 60 feet across and it is open to the sky. Within this bright spot, uh, you've, been, you've been walking through a gloaming of trees um, and so that you can see a little bit of sun now. Um, uh, within this bright spot, so different from the deep forest around it, there's an outcropping of rock. And it has, it has clearly saved this child from a grisly fate. It's a tiny form of a halfling child who's dressed in mud-splattered and ripped dungarees. He is clinging to the top of the rock like a limpet, and he is clearly too, too terrified to even cry. Um, pacing around the base of this rock are a pair of forest wolves, and their eyes are set with hungry intent. Every now and then they leap up to try and snap at his little ankles, and he's just out of reach and their claws can just barely not get purchase a few paces back from the wolves there's an older uh, dog he's got long limbs he's got deep red fur shot through with gray and he's sitting staring at the child 
at the top of the rocks. He's drooling. And it, but he's occasionally shaking his head and his big ears flap around so it catches your, your attention. And you, you notice an eerie green light flashing behind his eyes whenever he's staring at the child. And it seems to flicker away whenever he's shaking his head. And there's a collar of braided vines around his neck and they are emitting a similar glow. And I'm going to need y'all to roll initiative. And only he has the collar. Yes, the wolves do not. Damn it. Six, or is it plus oh, dexterity? No, your initiative is above your armor uh, class. Oh, no, or no, to no. the left of it, rather. Oh, uh, I got a 22. So, uh, hang on, let me write this down. So, Scout got a 22. Uh, Badger, what'd you get? 15. You're cutting out. You got a... Sorry. No, you're okay. A fifth, 15. One five. One five. Got it. Okay. And boss, what'd you get? Seven. That's plus your, your initiative? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, seven <laughs> is my favorite number, so I... Well, there you go. <laughs> um... Let me just put these in order so I can remember stuff. All right, well, Scout's definitely going to be going first. Um, then Badger, then Jasper gets to go next. Then Boss, then those two wolves. They did not roll well. All right, so Scout, you're first up. Badger, you're on deck. So Badger, go ahead and think about what you might be doing next. Um, and keep in mind that you are where you are um, and that you have a range of 30 feet, I think. So you'll need to move in range, Badger, uh, to hit stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, Scout, you've got a ranged weapon. Um, and you're definitely within range because it's got about 150 feet. Um, Can you show what what's 30 feet on this? Ah, so each of those black squares that you see, can you see those lines? Uh-huh, yeah. That's, a, that's five feet. So so this would be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So I actually could 20, reach the log. 25, 30, 35. The thing is, is um, diagonals cost more, so you can't, you can't okay. go diagonal for five. Okay. And also remember, I think you forgot about your spells last time. So remember, you've got some of those that can add a little bit more damage. So I'll give you a, a couple minutes, all of y'all, to, to look at what you might do next. And then, uh, Scout, when you're ready, go ahead and tell me what you want to do. Badger, be ready, because you're next. So, okay. Yep, so you've got... And scout, yeah. You've got that Hail of Thorns, which is pretty good. You've also got that Slayer's Prey under your actions. Slayer's Prey is great. So you should definitely use that for sure. And then you've got... Hunter's Mark is pretty good. I can't figure out... Um, this one. What are, you, what are you trying to figure out? What can I help you with? What is it called? I've, I've completely lost it. I printed off my character sheet and I'm trying to look at it on paper, which is not working for my brain. Oh, that's is all right. Is it Hail of Thorns? Yes. So, uh, yes, Hail of Thorns. It's a bonus action. So what you you would do oh. is you'd cast oh. it as a bonus action. Because you each that's get a... Would... Yeah, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Well, what I was wondering is if I would look at Badger and say, like, cause a distraction. And then on this round, I'm taking someone out. And on the next round, I'm grabbing Timony and bringing him to safety because I have good acrobatics. I think I you think. could you could communicate that to Badger. Now, Badger's not going to be able to respond until their turn, but... right. I think that could probably come across. Well, I'll let Badger speak for themselves um, on whether Badger. or not they think they could pick that up from Scout. 
Badger, create a distraction. Do you remember what we did in Rome? I, I do. I... I cannot handle you guys. You're just the goofiest. Okay. Um, all right. So, so you tell okay, Badger. Like Rome. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna so. use your bonus action to cast Hail of Thorns. Yeah. Then you're gonna. I'm gonna go with as close as I can to Timony, and I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns as my bonus action, Correct. so that I'm ready to bring Timony to oh, safety. Grab him. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I know I can't do that this turn. So, Hail of Thorns all the way. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Does this look alright? You're getting closer. I would love it if it was two squares closer. But I'm sure you would. Yeah, but that's about all you got range for right now. Um. Now, Hail of Thorns is something you cast, and then the next time you hit a creature with a ranged weapon, um, it it does more damage. So what you'd do is you'd cast it, and then you'd shoot it. Okay. Does that sound all right? So I'm really struggling with Hail of Thorns, but I'm going to figure it out. Let me, let me. So I will cast it. Do I have it? Do I have a clear idea of who's the biggest threat to Timony? You can see that um, the one to the left of the rock, and I'm just going to use the, you're looking at the map, the one near mm -hmm. the bottom, th that one. Um, that one okay. seems to be uh, the closest to nabbing at Timmy, Timmy's angle, angles. Angles, Jesus. So am I understanding this right, that I cast Hail of Thorns at that one? But I'm not going to hit it this round. Oh, okay. So every round you get an action and a bonus action. Um, sometimes, okay. if you're very fancy like um, this badger, you can you get two actions. But for scout, scout's going to get an action and a bonus action. You're... So I'm going to cut a tail of thorns and then I'm going to crossbow it. it. Uh, you've got a longbow, actually. Longbow, sorry. But that, yes. Okay. So, so you're going to... Um, are you using your sheet on the internet? Do you want me to push the buttons on the internet for I you? I have both. I, oh, I can do that. Because it, it, it uses a spell slot. It's the only reason I mention it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Got so it, got it, got it. You're going to okay. use Hail of Thorns, and then you're going to shoot it with your longbow. You're going to roll a d20. So Hail of Thorns cast. Well. Maybe. It, no, it happens. It just There's just a little box that fills in above okay. on your D&D Beyond sheet there's and then do you want me to roll the D20 on D&D Beyond or on or, or in my hat whichever you'd like okay uh 12 does it have a you add a plus 8 to it because it's your longbow and you're ridiculous well I'm fine with that Okay, so so this 20. this is what we call a dirty twenty. If you roll a nat twenty, yeah. you're gonna have to let me know. It is um, not that. I will. So you, you, you will know. <laughs> you'll you'll throw a party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you definitely hit. So now I'm gonna need you to roll damage. Now I'd like you to resolve your longbow damage, and then we'll talk about your hail of thorns damage. So you're gonna roll that d8. I told you to hold back. Okay. And you get to do your own math because I don't want to. Um, Someone else to help me with that. Okay, 11. 11 damage? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, um, I got a spell that must have Now roll... Oh, no, I roll. And then Miserably. Hail. Now roll a d10. And I will describe to you what this looks like, and you can tell me if that's what you want it to look like. I can also run, roll one for you if you would like. Okay. Eight. Okay. So I imagine that you... Um, do you cast Hail of Thorns by thinking about it really hard? Or do you pull out a thorn from a village you've 
you've you come from and sort of smooth it into the shaft of the arrow as you're drawing back to shoot can it be that i actually have this like insane bark and as i shoot the arrow like this all comes out my mouth and i i like bark and it's like the deepest bark. It's like it's not even come from my body because normally my bark's kind of annoying. And I like shoot it across as I shoot the arrow and the arrow flies and this bark just oh, resonates. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm all about that. Okay. So the arrow almost shivers in the air with this bark. And as it lands just thump right into the wolf, the arrow explodes and this literally a hail of thorns just covers this wolf and they're not just little thorns they're these huge vicious just thorns that grew to that size be no i don't want you to hear it. Thorn thorns that grew to that size because of the force you put behind them and it it pins the wolf to the ground and it doesn't even have time to cry out uh before it is dead you have murdered the crap out of this wolf good job and all i do is look at badger like I did good, right? You I did, did it. You did great. You did it. All right, so that's a bonus action and an action from Scout. So that's your turn, um, and you've moved. So we're going to move on to Badger, all right? Badger. I'm going to try to, dist I'm going to, try to distract that uh, other wolf. Now, I, I can tell you that you can sacrifice your action to do what is called a dash, which means you can do your movement again. So you can do 30 feet of movement and then you can move again, but you, you won't have an okay, action. That's what I want to do, yeah. So you're going to try and get right up in the face of this wolf. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So we'll put your, do you want to be right to the right of it or to, to the bottom of it? Bottom of it. Bottom. So you get right up in its face. Now, you can flavor what you do, but um, there will be no action, so you won't roll any dice. Do you want to flavor what this looks like? Like, do you do you do that thing where you're, you're, you're pulling the earth and you're, yeah, you're bounding over and do it's you like do... like a... Yeah, he's, you're no. leaping. Leap. And then when you get in front of the wolf, do you do that thing that dogs do where they kind of skid to a halt with their like they almost skid into a sit and their teeth pull back and your hackles are all up and you're right, you're trying to shove your face up into the wolf's face. All right. That sounds good. Um, now that's going to be your action. Um, and I don't think you get a bonus action. I don't think you have any bonus action. You have, spell oh yeah, no. Uh, no, and you don't have any bonus actions, so that's going to be your turn, all right? Now, I forgot to tell Boss to get ready. Now, it's Jasper's turn, but Boss, you're on deck, so you hang out for a second while I try to remember what Jasper does. The Jasper is alternating between sitting on the floor, uh, sitting with his butt on the ground, and shaking his head, like feet digging into the earth, shaking his head. Like there is a bug in his ear, and he can't get it out, and he can't stand it. He's alternating between that and his, his butt popping off the ground, and his hackles going up, and him starting to take a step forward towards the dog, or towards the kid. And not a step forward, but like a bound forward. And a jerks to a stop and he sits again and he shakes his head he's alternating between these two sometimes instead of bounding forward he like rest he pace he paces one step to either side restlessly this is a very conflicted doggo um but that's all he does boss what do you do i feel terrible about jasper yeah he's obviously trying to fight it mm -hmm. and i do I have the, oh, wow, I'm really far back. What I really want to do is jump on top of that rock and stand over top of Timony. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Timothy. Timony. Yeah. It's yeah. it's like timpani, like the instrument timpanies, but it's a timony. I don't know. I didn't name him. Timony. Boss, you've uh, got you've got thirty feet, so I could get you there, but it would cost your action. Does that sound all right? Could I talk after that or no? You can talk as a free action, but no one will be able to respond until their turn. What if it's Jasper? Jasper will also not be able to respond until his turn. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to jump and I want to get on top of the kid to Got protect it. him. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So you get right up on this rock. And I'll put you on top. And you're you're right over Timony. And yeah. what does this run look like? Are you a graceful running creature or do you look like a bear? I'm bounding. You're bounding. And you just take one ha ha tremendous leap and you land right on top of Timony. And um, what do you say? Jasper! Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Get a hold of yours. Excellent. That's what I say. I like it. All right. Um, okay. Um, now, Badger, it is this wolf's turn, and it is going to try. Its whole snout twists into a snarl that is so devoid of of compassion or thought it's a, a mindless look and ugh, you've got to be kidding me <laughs> i rolled a natural one i have to decide what this looks like <laughs> um fine i think the the wolf is so amped up and so I think it is it is so without thought that it it tries to lunge forward and, and bite you, but you're down like almost you're between its front feet, its front legs, and it misses and lands on its own leg and it actually is it's so it is so driven that he bites his own leg off like bites at his own leg. And he doesn't even seem to notice he's doing damage to himself. So that's the wolf's turn. Very sorry, I'm coughing. Um, now, I would like all of you to roll an insight check, please, on Jasper. Or a nature or arcana check, whoever's, whatever you've got that's higher. 18. On what? On insight? Insight, yeah. Mm -hmm. On nature. Nature. Okay. Boss, what do you got? Seven. Cool. Um, Timony is scrambling around underneath you, boss, and it is, it is, he's slipping off the rock. You're, you're finding it hard to stand on this rock as well because it's, it, there's not a lot of good places for your feet. And so you shout this at, at Jasper, and it seems to galvanize Jasper, but you can't, you can't, you're distracted from paying attention to the, to the reaction that he has. But, um, but, uh, Scout, you realize Jasper is trying to resist a force that is compelling him. And that noise that you heard in the village is much louder here. And there seems to be echoes of it coming off of Jasper. And you assumed those were mind control noises before. And so you're associating that now with Jasper. He seems to be resisting somebody trying to control his mind. Now, Badger, you realize... Would Scout kind of communicate that with any sort of body language to Badger, maybe? Would that, would that, is that a thing? No, that's fine. Oh. I mean, I feel like Badger and I have a really good connection. And, you know, while Badger tolerates me a lot of the time, if I'm concerned about something, Badger does know. Okay. So I'm like, is this kid wearing something around their neck? Like, what's going on? And I'm like looking at Badger, like, maybe Rome won't work out. Like, what's going on here? And I'm getting Badger to, like, also look with me. 
to be clear, the the person your your cat you you were looking at inside on was the the old dog, not the kid. So you're seeing the okay. the dog is trying to resist uh, some will. Okay. I apologize if I misspoke. Just to no, clarify, that's there. Completely on me. Okay. I do that with words. That's okay. Um, okay, so I'm looking at I'm looking at Badger, and I'm wondering about Jasper the dog, and I'm wondering if Jasper's wearing something. I'm seeing that Jasper's trying to fight something off, and I'm and I'm trying to figure out um, how are we gonna do this. Because because Rome was really about kind of just killing the bad guys, but if this Jasper isn't a bad guy, what are we gonna do? Got it. Now, Badger, you realize that 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 collar around his neck is the source of this force. You pick up from Scout that there's something wrong here. You recognize the conflict through through Scout's help, and then you realize that that collar that's em- that's emanating that green that sick green glow that's also flashing in and out of his eyes that's got to be that's got to be it that's got to be it all right mm-hmm. now we're back up to the top of the round and it is scout's turn scout what are you doing uh and badger you're on deck so i'm like running towards timony which was the original plan mm-hmm. um super fast because i'm amazing when i'm in this mode mm-hmm. and i'm like Badger, are we sticking with Rome? Okay, so you want to continue running towards Timony? Yeah, there's like leaf debris flying and my saliva coming out the side of my, my face. And Boy, that's a great I'm like, visual. I'm on point, but I'm checking in with Badger before I get there. Like, we still doing this, dude? So I can get you right up on top of Timony with just your your regular move action. I can also place you where I've got you now on the map, where you're next to Badger. Did you want to hold off on grabbing Timony until Badger can no, confirm on their turn? I think I'm going to stick with Rome. Okay. I think I'm going to stick with Rome. And, and the plan is that I grab Timony uh-huh. in, in a really an incredibly safe manner. Sure. And Back of the neck, like, yeah. Kind of, we're going to roll out of danger and i'm gonna trust badger and boss to deal with the forces of evil all right i'm gonna need uh i'm hoping an acrobatic yeah that sounds great um, i'm gonna need an acrobatic to to this plan but okay listen <laughs> you were in rome and it worked really well yeah i'll give you acrobatics go for it all right 14 Plus four, so eighteen. All right, so you you get you get Timony in a not uncomfortable, too uncomfortable hold for him. Um, I want it's still screaming. It's still what? Screaming. <laughs> You're just always so negative, boss. Um, <laughs> you get Timony. I can't. Do you want to Real- use? <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna let you grab him and roll off the rock, but. Uh, That's exactly right. That that acrobatics check is going to be your action, okay? Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. And is this the kind of thing where you're sort of, you grab him by the back of the scruff of his, his clothes, the scruff of his dungarees, and sort of whip him off the rock and then jump down after him with that momentum? So you kind of land I on the ground, kind of... Kinda... We, we become one, and uh, I might even, like, you know, like hold on to him a teeny bit too tight. Okay. A little bit more, but so I do also him shield him as you like, hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. Back to the ground. Um, he actually. I think we should do a video slow mo replay of this because it feels like it's not how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a tongue somewhere in there that that just There's sort of flies of in the wrong direction and. There's a lot of saliva and a little bit of pee. I imagine that Scout thinks this looks way cooler than it does, and to everybody else it kind of looks like Scout <laughs> grabbed the kid and just fell off the rock. <laughs> That's exactly right. And Scout stands up and he's on and all four feet, and he's like... I... <laughs> it's like I'm always misunderstood. <laughs> but but you're, you're cute, so... That's... <laughs> Alright. Um, Scout, that's going to be your turn. Uh, Badger, what are you doing? I think I want to do an unarmed strike and hit this wolf um, right on his nose. Just, like, let him know 
I'm not gonna eat today. It's you're, not just, it's just not gonna happen. You're gonna whap the nose on the the wolf on the nose instead of swordsing him. Let me look at my swords. Hang on. Well, let me be clear. The the doggo seems to be controlled, but the wolves do not. The wolves just seem mean. So I don't need to like can I can You could you could eat the wolf, yeah. You could have that. Kill it. Go for it. Have fun. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna sword him. Now person. you have two weapon fighting and you have short swords, which are light weapons. So if you um use your action to um, hit with a short sword, you're able to y- take a second action and attack with the other one, if you would like. Sorry. I want to do like a- Not a second okay. action. You use your bonus action to hit with the other one. Yeah. I'm going to do one slash this way, one slash that way. On... Actually, maybe on his neck. Okay. Now, Instead of his nose. I would like you... That sounds good. I would like you to roll 1d20... And add plus five and tell me what happens. I rolled a 16. That hits. Now go ahead and roll me damage. You're going to roll that D6. Four. And then you're going to add three. So that's seven for that first hit. Um, Now land your second hit. Go ahead and roll a D20. Tell me what you got. A 14 and that was plus 3, or is that not true for the... No, the plus 3 is for the damage. You get a plus 5 to hit. So you rolled a 14 plus 5? Yeah, it's a 19. Now, I think you crit on 19s, maybe. I can't remember if that's true for this one or for somebody else. Hmm... Yes. If your score, if your attack scores a, well, do you have to roll a 19? No, I think you have to roll a 19. Okay, ignore me. Sorry. So now roll a d6 and add, add three, three. Oh, just four. Four? Roll the one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so your swords scissor into this, this wolf and it actually keels right over. Um, you got it. Uh, let's say you landed one right in the crook of where the neck and the shoulder meets and it, it sunk a little deeper than you might have intended. The other one comes in uh, on, does it come in on the other side or the same side, you think? Other side. Other side. That one doesn't go as deep, but it, it gets more of the under, so it you end up just almost, you don't quite remove the head, but it's pretty close. Um, and that wolf is done. Um, you are still an initiative, though, because Jasper is still struggling. Um, but Badger, that's your turn. Jasper's going to keep taking that one step forward. Um, but you notice that every time he ends up moving, he gets a little further away from Timony. Um, and so he's about here at this point. Uh, and sorry, boss, I forgot to remind you, you were on deck after I said Jasper is doing his thing. But boss, what are you doing? Can I do a guiding bolt to the towards Jasper towards specifically that collar thing? Will I injure Jasper? I think it's going to have to depend on your role. Let's. Um, you said really just want to cut, cut the collar. Yeah. How about you roll a d twenty, and if you roll high enough, I'll. Uh, I will. I will allow it. Well, this app is kind of crappy, but okay. I, I can roll with my my ridiculous dice if you'd like. Uh, I got an eight. You got an eight plus six, uh, which is math that I don't like. You know what? I'll give you advantage on this because you were trying really hard just to hit that collar. So go ahead and roll me. Roll it again. <gasps> Fifteen. Yes, and you a plus six is a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Um, now I want you to roll damage. So you're gonna roll four 
d6. So roll a d6 four times. One. Mm -hmm. Three. Okay. Two. Okay. Six. Wait, I lost count. One, four is five, two is seven, oh. six is 13. Did I do that right? Yeah. Great. Um, what does your guiding bolt look like? Does it look like a shining beam of light? Is there trumpets and angels? Uh, no, is there little very, sparkly motes? What's it look it like? It has a very specific arrow pointed edge and it goes right just to the collar. Okay. There are some like sparks. Um, the, and is there like a color that happens with your cleric nonsense? Like, are, is this like a faint glowing, like a serene blue or is it like a... Serene uh, blue sounds wonderful. Great. So this, this arrow shoots towards it, lands right on that collar. And instead of there being like a force impact, the, the, the serene blueness of it seems to splash out onto the rest of the collar and where it impacts and everywhere it touches the collar, it just dissolves into dust. And as it, and it goes in both directions. So it lands and then it's like, sh -sh 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 -sh, and you can hear these snaps and pops and you can hear these weird echoes of the mind control. That druidic noise is just like echoing and weird piercing it shouldn't echo like that you shouldn't hear an echo coming from just one angle and you're hearing all these weird different um echoes and the dog jasper shakes his head of free of all of it and his eyes are completely clear and he immediately charges at scout because scout has timony and um scout roll me an insight check real quick Okay, I'm just checking what my modifier is. Plus three. Okay, 11. 14. You can tell that Jasper is no longer being controlled, and all he's reacting to right now is that he perceives that Timony is da in danger because a very large dog just rolled off of a rock with him and is trying to take him away. What do you so he do? Doesn't, his collar is not a threat anymore? His collar's gone. The green weirdness is gone. He is completely in control of himself. And every line of that old man running, it, there's so no... So I would like yeah. to do the kind of four paw leap that I'm really good at out of the way of Timony. Like, dude, here's your kid. Oh, like, yours. We get you. We understand you. Um, and we're here for you. And And... Uh, we're not a threat. And also, I'm really good at that. Like, I've, I've, got, I've kind of got a really good subsequious posture. So as soon as you bounce away, his hackles go down, but he's still, like, and he looks confused, like, oh, did I? I get I, it. I get it. Did I, I it. just read You'll this? I get it. And he skids to a halt in front of Timony, and he's got his, he's, like, pushing his butt up into Timony, and Timony is just sobbing. He's, he's this poor little, he's a six-year-old yeah. He's overwhelmed and he doesn't know what's happening. And, oh, he's upset. And and um, keeping an eye on all of you, Jasper turns his head and he's kind of like trying to get one of his ears up over the boy's face. And the boy's trying to hide behind it. And that seems to calm him down. And once he once they configure that, so Jasper's one of those big long ears is over the boy's face. And, and Jasper's kind of like, he kind of gives you that head nod like, thanks, bro. Because he can't talk. You know, but he, he, he's like, Dex, you know. And then he starts urging Timony out of the clearing. Can I get a perception check from everybody with advantage? Oh, 19. Oh, wow, 19. Okay. Three. Great. <laughs> Boss, what do you got? 17. Great. Um, Badger, you were very distracted by the fact that this big old hound started running towards your friend, and you're you're kind of like focused on him. Um, exactly, you do care. You do. Yeah. Of course, I do. Scout, I think this has happened to you before, but you you bounce away, and that just that change in in focus, like I am no longer protecting Timony. That shift gets snapped up by a new noise, and Boss, you. You see Scout's ears swivel like they do, and mm -hmm. y then you hear it too. 
there is the sound of a great many feet pounding towards you and the sound of a great many howls going up. And you realize that what sounds like every single dog from that village is converging on this point. What do you do? I absolutely look at Jasper and tell him, you and Timony need to take cover now. We can do this, but we can't look after you as well. He nods. He grabs Timony by the scruff of the neck. Um, he hesitates like he's trying to tell you something. Can you roll me another insight? Ch- I've never had a group roll more insight checks, but I just feel like it's appropriate for dogs. Are you only good tonight, man? Yeah, what well, you got? Wait, 19 plus what's my modifier? Ooh. Three, I think. Yeah. Oh, whoo, 22. Okay. Um, he's trying to tell you something, and you think... You have the oddest feeling that he's trying to tell you that you're not in any danger, but he's going to, he's going to do this anyway, because he's like, he's going to take, take Timmy out of this because, because he's just, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone mm-hmm. So he, he runs off. Um, uh, do you do anything with that information? Guys, it seems like we're not in any danger. Let's take cover and see what happens. Where do y'all take cover? It's a great question. Fragile, where should we take cover? Everybody, play dead. <laughs> great. Um, it's not working. <laughs> um, does everybody play dead? From evil and good? You can, yeah. You, you I cover? forgot you have that, yeah. So you take cover, you do protection from evil and good. Can you tell everybody what that means? So I'm just checking, dead, Jesus. and it seems to mean that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you don't know? Let me let me check. Uh, okay, okay. Um, oh, I can only do it to one person. What but... an interesting thing. Who will you do it to? Badger. Course. No! <laughs> Boss, knew it too! Frankly, a dog coming at us, Scout! Scout and Badger together forever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's carve a mystery. Well, I think I, I, I opened a, a box of, of, of conflict there. My apologies. Um, um, so you cast this, this, this spell, it settles onto Badger and you feel a a bit stronger than you normally would. Um, I was going to ask a question. Was it a good choice? No. (laughs) (laughs) That's not what I was going to ask. Um, uh, hang on, I just have to make a note really quickly because I have to remember the fact that you just shouted everybody play dead. <laughs> um, because it makes me really be ha- really happy. <laughs> and the fact that it comes from a character named Boss also just mm, <laughs> such good feelings. Um, do I either of you in real life? Do either of you play dead? Does Boss play I... dead? Does everybody play dead? I absolutely would not, because all I'm worried about is Boss and Badger. I don't care how they treat me. I, I, I just need to protect them. And Boss is mean, but I don't care. I love Boss. Not true. I'm not mean. I am <laughs> So, Scout, are you trying to stand in front of them in the in the direction of, that the doggos seem to be coming from? You know, I think I would be like in front of them but I, I wouldn't be like high on my legs I'd be like low to the ground so I'm like half brave yeah you're like okay and Badger where yeah. are you at you've seen that posture I have poor little babies <laughs> uh, where's where's I'm Badger gonna, I'm gonna get on the rock must be and... tall must be tall yes and um, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna plant my my feet and just like, just like come boom, at me, bro. Boom. Do you do that thing where you like set set them down one at a time, where you're in, like real hard, like you're stomping, like bam, bam, I'm here. All right. 
And boss, how are, how are you doing? Are you playing dead or are you going to... You're playing dead. Great. Uh, are you going to do it at the top of the rock or behind the rock like where are we playing dead? Mm. It's obviously oh. behind the rock. Behind the rock. Got it. All right. Mm. All right. So we've got one dog who is very brave. We, we're very sure, but a little scared. And we've got one dog that's like, come at me, bro. And we've got one dog that is super playing dead. Um, the... The sight that greets you as you all set yourselves into place is truly fantastic. There are at least, there are dozens of dogs streaming through these closely packed trees of every size, every color. There's a pair of uh, honey colored uh, Labradors right at the front. They give you a, a glance and keep running. None of them are wearing collars. None of them, uh, uh, none of them are wearing those green collars, but on a couple of them, you notice uh, that there seem to be pieces of what were the woven willow collars flaking off. Um, it appears that the force of your it appears that the force of your spell on Jasper's might have funneled through to the rest of them, and caused a tra- chain reaction. So. Hey, you realize immediately that th- these dogs are not a threat. They're just trying to get back to the village. Um, and there's they're just all shapes and sizes. There's a big old Doberman who's got that big bell bark. There's um, this bitty little Pomeranian rat-looking thing that has beautifully combed hair. And there's a couple of twigs in it. And it looks mightily pissed. And it is like levitating through the air it's so unhappy there's there's just dogs of every kind here and they are they have a single-minded focus to get back to that village do you guys follow them no celebrate them (laughs) i think we should follow them because i think they know it's dinner time (laughs) i want to know where the druid is oh let's look at scout Coming up with these. Yep. Good yeah, call. Like, boss, come on. Stay you focused. Know, I know you're you hungry. You're in there, Scout. Boss, it's it's time. It's time. Let's go. Do it. I'm like shivering. I'm, I've never been so brave in speaking up to you. But I feel <laughs> really strongly that it's time to go in the opposite direction. So this is where we're going to close. We're going to close with the image of dozens and dozens of every kind of dog in the world streaming past you to, towards the village. And we're with, so proud of them. With Scout head up, tail kind of tucked, uh, mm-hmm. looking at Boss out of the corner of their eye like, I'm going to do, we're going to do it. Boss is is nodding like all right let's do this and badger's probably just ready to go right and you start to head further down the path you've you've rescued a little boy you freed those dogs and you're gonna free this forest from whatever that damn druid's doing as well yeah we are um so that is all the time we have for this evening um so that's where we'll leave it for tonight um yeah, thank you, everybody. I love your doggos. They're they're some of my favorite doggos. I like to. I usually end my my persistent campaigns with asking everybody to nominate role playing points, uh, role playing moments, and then um, the players vote on them, and they get it. Whoever wins gets an advantage on the on a roll the next session. Because this is a one shot, we're not quite going to do that, but. What I thought I would do is have you guys share any role playing moments that you really liked because it's a good celebration of the of the of the uh the game we just played. Is there anything that you can recall that really stood out as like just a really solid moment of of role playing? For me it was when every time Scout pees himself on accident. That's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, that's just the spirit of I know. Yeah. That's that's good. That's yeah. Um, any other good moments? 
I thought actually that Boss was a very good grumpy boss. And I really liked how Badger went with the whole Rome scenario. That was really good, yeah. That was good. That was good. I loved the whole thing. Yeah, the Rome moment was really good. I did really appreciate Boss's uh, grumpy boss um, because Mm -hmm. we've all had that boss, right? That like all you want is to not disappoint them. Like, that would be the worst. Like, you'd almost rather they get mad at you. Like, you definitely gave me those vibes. It was real good. Oh, yeah. Disappointment is the worst. For the record, I am now terrified to ever work for you in real life. Because I would just be terrified of working, like, disappointing you. Yeah, the the player behind the character of Boss. I learned from the best. (laughs) (laughs) Good to know. Normally. (laughs) Good to know. All right. Any any other good role playing moments? And chat, if you want to chime in and and share any good moments that you liked as well, go ahead. Uh, But any other good role playing moments from from my players here? I think a good I think a good DM moment was oh, you don't you don't have to do that but thank you but, but you like we got through quite a lot despite some late starts and making things work and also just I don't know really good DM skills and to, and helping us you know we're, we're none of us in this group are afraid of saying wait so when this happens what does that mean and you explain yeah. it and it keeps the it keeps the play going and it's really fun so i think that's something to be celebrated i appreciate that it's it's difficult to do to to be able to keep the narrative going while answering questions about some arbitrary numbers on a piece of paper you right. know like that that can be difficult and i've played with some gms that where it just kind of takes you out of the game and so i've been i've tried to cultivate a, a space where y- you can do both and it's not too tough and the way I try to do it uh, this is a tip is if anybody focuses on well what does this mean how what is what what do how do numbers do then what you do is you tie that into like you explain it then you tie your explanation to a visual right so so when you were like how does hail of thorns do do a thing I Mm -hmm. used I used the visual of of the arrow exploding from the force of your bark i used the thing that you you gave me as as uh, i used your description in that visual so that i could i could explain it another way and that that kind of helps inform the narrative if you had a question about it then you're thinking about it then i'll describe it and then that keeps you engaged and keeps you moving that's great good yeah. for me you know yeah, it's. Uh, I, it took me forever to figure that out. Um, I'm still not sure it works super well, but that's what I do. That's how I try to do that. And thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I just, uh, you guys have such a good dynamic um, between all, all your characters. You play such good doggos. You really embody them. And um, I know you just, you really bring life to, to these, these, you know, these pieces of paper. And I just love watching you guys interact with each other because none of you are out for your own you know for on your own you're all you're always every single action you guys you folks had was was we woven into what somebody else was doing like scout you kept referring to badger and boss and boss you know you kept referring back to scout and badger was like you know referring to but you 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 all did a really good job of that and i i really appreciate that that this this has all the hallmarks of a really good group and if i could start another campaign but i don't can't don't do don't make me do it um, you, but you're, you guys have a really good dynamic. You, you would end up making a really good persistent group, I think, because you'd learn That's from each other. Now and then group. Yeah. I mean, I, I would not mind doing more of this. Like I, there is more to this adventure actually. Um, I kind of brought a piece of the end up to the, uh, to this point, but I can, I can modify that and we could keep going if you wanted, um, and you know, with our scheduling, it, it'll probably take a couple months to get us right. on. Right. <laughs> so it'll I be think fine. That group sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm happy to to play with you guys um, on a fairly regular basis. That would be fun. I really like 
This this has been fun. Now that we have all the tech worked out, theoretically, we will never have to deal with it again, right? Thanks, Luth. I won't change anything. Yeah, Luth is Luth is the best. Um, yeah. Seven hundred uh, points. Seven mil three. Yes, we we love you three thousand. Um, <laughs> And and for anybody joining stream for the first time, Not Lucera is both my husband and my tech guru, and he got every single human in this stream today back on track. Well, I think Val was pretty solid. Never mind. Yeah, okay. So you know, I'm maybe still here. The... Actually, no, he did help me get your character sheet too. So he did help all of us. He helped everybody in this stream get up and running. So. He's he's the only reason like Seven Spoon actually exists, both the human and the stream, just for the record. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let's end with um, you can find uh, like Seven Spoon, which is me. You can find me again on uh, Saturday. I'll be writing Broken Bane, which is a persistent campaign, a newer one. Um, they're a bunch of heroes and decided to save the world. Um, they're going to uh, start a new arc. Uh, they just finished up an adventure, and they're going to start a new one. I'm going to introduce them to it. And I'm particularly proud of it because I really like trains. You can also find me on Sunday because I've decided to torture myself and uh, put myself into a situation where I prepare nothing. I walk into a two-hour session with one player who has built their character, and I know nothing about it. They describe it, and then I make up a story on the spot. If you think that sounds both terrible and hilarious join me on Sunday um, would anybody else like to share where you can be found uh, when you're not guesting in my stream I cannot really be found very much online mm -hmm. um, but I am on Twitter as Spielwoman mm -hmm. and representing the Star Institute for Sensory Processing and Critical Call which is an amazing and super cool role-playing game. It is, is the best. It's astonishing. And it, what it what Critical Core is, is a, a tabletop role-playing game that is used by therapists to support um, kids and tweens and teens to figure out who they want to be in the world in the safe sandbox of RPGs. And that you haven't seen anything like it before. It is awesome and i know that um seven spoon is involved in it and it's amazing so check it out if you're going to check anything out check out critical core yeah the first time i heard about um a, a, a group called um, game to grow um, which is a non-profit that um I'm gonna I'm gonna oversimplify this internet. Just know that I'm oversimplifying this. The first time I heard about it, um, somebody was describing it as they used Dungeons and Dragons to teach autistic kids social skills. And being an autistic kid myself, who has no social skills, um, I was immediately like my I hurt myself. My head whipped around so fast, and I was like, "Tell me more." I was very very excited. Now, Critical Core is so interesting to me because it takes. Um, a lot of the elements that you can use D&D to teach social skills with um, and sort of streamlines them uh, in a really nice way. And it adds a lot of, uh, I'm a big fan of lore, like it adds a lot of really interesting elements there too that I help, I think helps inform a lot of those narratives. And the best part about it, I think, is it's not intimidating. Like, you think about D&D &D teaching kids social skills, you've got so many complexities there, right? Like, well, first I have to learn D&D, &D, then I have to be a good storyteller, then I have to take whatever I know about social skills and impress them on those other people. And that's just, that's just one angle, right? Like Game to Grow does a bunch of other stuff. Critical Core can do a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I think it's, I think it's a really interesting thing that exists and I love it to pieces and I'll talk about it forever, but she, the player who played Scout can probably tell you a lot more actual information about it. I'll just be very enthusiastic. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're on equal footing, but I think, I think the only thing I would add is that, um, we take the idea that social skills can be taught in this kind of rote way, which is not real life, right? But it's what happens in the therapy room, right? Yes. And we and we challenge it, and we say, actually, let's do it in play in a dynamic, organic, and spontaneous situation, because that's what tabletop role playing games do. Right. And that is what is going to generalize to real life. So you can figure out who you want to be by playing it. Yeah. And that can happen when you're 
16, 11, 26, 36. Are you picking those numbers for a specific reason? <laughs> so not. I apologize if it felt like I just, home. I just thought that was interesting. I was like, is there data behind this? Or are those just like numbers <laughs> that you really like? Like, I, yeah. So, um... Yeah, you can you can chat with either of us. You can um, follow one of the links I uh, the game to link I put up. I don't have a critical core link. Is there is there a website for that? Um, critical core is on Twitter as critical core RPG, I believe. I'm gonna just double check it while I say it. Um, but basically look for game to grow and you're going to find what you need yeah that's why i like to game to grow in the chat okay um so yeah we're we're anyone related to game to grow can either point you in the direction of critical core talk to you about game to grow or um or so you can find everybody knows where to find me on twitter like seven spoon and, and you can follow spiel woman as well and we can we can point you in the right direction um does anybody else want to share where they can be found not in my stream or y'all good you're good you're good all right you're good. Well, um, then y'all will just have to pay attention the next time I bring these wonderful players on if you want to see them play again. And uh, with that, I think we will wrap it up. Stream, stream, you have been great. Uh, we really enjoyed uh, being with you this evening. And we will we will find you later. Uh, everybody say bye, stream, stream. Bye, bye stream, stream. Bye, stream, stream.